Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. We've got two battles for you today because I swear these World of Tanks battles are just getting shorter and shorter. Start, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> Starting with Copy Copes here in the American Tier 6 M6 Heavy Tank. Both of the battles that you're going to be seeing today feature personal bests from the two players concerned. Um, what is he doing with that gun barrel? Is, is this just something that he does at the start of every battle? I'm going to have to take control of the camera here. But yep, I guess he's giving it the old 90mm gun barrel salute. Oh well, anyway. I have to admit, I was never a big fan of the M6 when I first played it, but that was a really long time ago and I was crap and I just didn't understand how to angle armour and make the most of what is good about this tank. Because while there's lots that's bad about this tank, as the Panzer IV over there is about to find out the hard way, the gun is pretty good. Also, the turret armor is not bad either. I mean, it's, it's definitely not great. Nobody is ever going to accuse this tank of being great, but it does have a good 90mm gun. And it's reasonably accurate as well, which is quite unusual, particularly for heavy tanks, and even more particularly, medium tier tanks, like the M6 here. Oh, and there's his second victim. Of course, all of these dead enemy tanks on the corner are providing, well, extra frontal armour for the other enemy tanks taking cover behind them. But, I mean, you know, Cody's in a good spot here. His hull armour is kind of bad, but his turret's all right. Hello? T6 medium. He probably thinks he's in a good spot. Well, he is in a good spot. There's only a bit of his turret exposed above the wrecks of those tanks that he's taken shelter behind, but you don't want to be trading <laughs> like this against an M6's 90mm gun. I mean, you know, take the hint after the first two shots go right through the front of your turret and you're not going to survive a third. I'm sure Kopi was entirely happy to accept that trade because there was no way he was going to lose it. Hey, and there's killed them before. Wow, what is going on? And yet, the rest of this team between them have only managed to get one kill. That Stuart probably wants to get out of here. Oh, oh it didn't. No, the engine fire took him out. <laughs> Kill number five. If this was World of Warships, he'd have already earned a crack at Unleashed. Uh, but it isn't, so he's just going to have to keep going. Flush with success after his fifth kill, you'd think he'd just continue pushing on, but uh, he's one of that rare breed of World of Tanks players who's able to look at and absorb the information displayed on the minimap. The enemy team are also two kills ahead, and the base is definitely under threat, so he's heading back to uh, try to head them off at the pass and see if he can't do something about that. There's only a Hetzer and a Type 234 protecting the base. The team have gone down another kill, the enemy are three kills ahead. But he might, should probably be able to get into position here to, uh, well, there's going to be a dose of surprise butt sets here. Oof. Oh wait, another engine fire. Oh, is he too cheap to load a fire extinguisher? He is. <laughs> Double strike. <laughs> if such a thing was even a thing in World of Tanks, honestly, I think it probably should. Bit of cruelty to small tanks there, taking out that poor innocent Luke's on six hit points, but hey, all spare in love and war. And then another T6 medium. Now, I'm pretty sure that he would have been entirely happy to take the Pepsi challenge against the T6 medium if it had just been the T6 medium, but he took a couple of hits, amazingly, both of which bounced from the left, where there's a Hellcat and a Wolverine. So, yeah. Not tonight, Josephine. Get it? Because we're on the Paris map. We I'll get my coat. So he knows there's a, yep, Wolverine and a Hellcat up there. And, wow, looks like the T6, much like the previous T6, was completely incapable of taking the hint. All right, well, he's going to take the T6 out, no problem. And he does, and there's the Radley Walters medal, eight kills. Took a hit from the Wolverine, though, so ducks in close to the wall here. Where did the Hellcat go? Can I get a shot? No, there's nothing there. Oh, that's bad news. Right, the team are capping the enemy base. It's at this point where I think his spider sense starts tingling, because we haven't seen that Hellcat in a while, and he takes another hit from the rear, 
from the Wolverine. Sneaky bugger and ah oh, shit, there's the Hellcat. Okay, this is this is bad. That was quite a smart move from those two tank destroyers. He tries to get the ram and finish off the Hellcat after taking what looks like Bolivia's national debt and gold ammo from the two of them in a tier six battle. <laughs> because of course. Meanwhile the scores are even. The rest of the team between them have only managed to kill four enemy tanks and this Matilda sitting in a bush is actually in a pretty good spot in the enemy cap circle. The uh, flat panzer here covering one side. I'm not sure he's close enough to that bush to actually be able to see through it. We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he is. Matilda's over there. He's about to win by capping. Slightly more than 30 seconds to go. There's the Matilda. Ah, shit. Oh, well. You're about to get the cap reset, but it will result in another kill because there's no way that... Go and the flat pan... Yeah, there we go. Nice. Nice bit of teamwork there between the Matilda and the flat panzer. Matilda took a hit there. I mean, you know the Matilda's a tough tank, but it's a tough tier 4 tank. And the Hellcat has a 90mm gun, and it's tier 6. So it only needed to get one hit off in order to reset the cap, and it has done that. Matilda... Hiding up in the bush again, and the flat panzer is coming over to join him. Both of them getting into the cap circle. Here he comes. Gonna use the wreck. Nice. Repositioning the wreck of the Hellcat to protect his flank. So the enemy only have, well, they have two tanks, but one's artillery, so it's not gonna be that much use. It's all gonna be down to the Wolverine. The Wolverine does not have a lot of time to get into this cap and reset it. Both the Matilda and the flat, there it is, both covering different angles. Scores a hit. Wow, does no damage. The Wolverine's got seconds to get the reset off with the flat panzer taking cover behind the wreck of the Hellcat, and it is too little, too late, possibly thinking he was going to be able to spot an artillery would take the shot, but uh, if that was his plan, it was not a good one. Copy Copes in the M6 Heavy, getting himself an ace tanker on the Paris map, as well as a top gun, a high calibre, but more importantly, that Radley Walters medal. Because while this is not his damage record, he's done more damage than this in the game of World of Tanks. But, I mean, 3000 damage at tier 6 is pretty damn impressive anyway, but this is his first ever Radley Walters award. So congratulations, Copy. Extremely well done. All of which brings us on to our second offering today and it's another personal best but this one is entirely different this is dacam card 719 this is dave welcome back dave it's been a while where have you been it's been too long he is of course in a all tier 10 battle here on the pro Karolka map and he is in the french tier 10 light tank the amx 105 now i know what you're all thinking the second you see a scout tank on this map, you're thinking, right, it's a spot and damage record, isn't it? Well, it kind of is, but it's not going to happen the way you think. <laughs> now, are you sure about that, Jingles? Because I know the bush he's heading for, and yes, he is absolutely heading for the famous bush here on Prokhorovka, over on the western end of the map. But things are not going to work out the way you might be expecting. They're definitely not going to work out the way Dave is expecting. He's heading for the bush. I mean, this is what light tank players do on this end of the map. Unfortunately, he's about to get buggered by the enemy light tank. There, he's been spotted. That's the map call. Oh, and here it comes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. There go his tracks. There goes the repair kit. There goes more than half of his health. And it's all down to that pesky map call. Outspotted by a British light tank. The shame. But Dave, as we all know, because it's not the first time he's been featured on this channel, <coughs> he's not a quitter. I mean, he's managed to disengage, and he's gone undetected. And he's going to have another go. Now, some may consider this foolhardy. <laughs> but the Manticore also got spotted. Actually, can we just focus on the fact that the Manticore also got spotted, and is still spotted? and hasn't suffered a single hit point worth of damage. And look what happened to Dave. I mean, that's hardly fair, is it? Oh, and he's been spotted again. 
takes a massive hit from the IS-7 and now he has 24 hit points which theoretically you could argue is 23 more than he needs and just to add insult to injury zero spotting damage <laughs> he's lost all of his health trying to spot and he's got zero spotting damage now a lot of people might give up at this point <laughs> but Dave is no quitter you might, with some justification, be thinking that his confidence in his team is more than a little misplaced because he's still done zero spotting damage. <laughs> and here they come. Oh lordy. Here they come. Trust me, it looks bad. It's about to get a whole lot worse. The team are 4,000 hit points and one kill down and here comes the onslaught. I mean, yeah, it's... Wow, <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> look at them all. And look what's there in defense. All they have is a Fosh 155, a Jaegeru and an E100 against at least seven enemy tanks. Dave's there in chat. I'm a dead man, remember me. <laughs> but then the enemy advance starts to falter. It, it, Turns out they can dish it out, but they don't like taking it. And it's here where Dave, as he's basically being overrun, <laughs> he starts to feel like maybe they can do it. And he's already racked up 4,300 spotting damage. The K91, by the way, over there, also doing a good job of active spotting in the field. And basically, they're lighting these guys up from both sides. They have at least managed to take out that bastard manticore, <laughs> so there is some justice in the world. He's now up to 4,000 spot and damage. 5,000 spot and damage. As the Jaegeru and the Fosh 155 just continue, with some support from the artillery, because artillery knows what's good for them, continue to hammer all these enemy tanks. Oh, did you see that shot that just whizzed through the bush? That was the 121B. He doesn't know that Dave's there, but he wasn't born yesterday. That shot scraped the paint off the top of Dave's turret. Yeah, that guy right there, the Chinese medium. However, the team have absolutely smashed the other flank, which means all these guys here and anybody else hiding in the bushes at the back are all that's left on the enemy team. And Dave, with 24 hit points, is up to 9,000 spotting damage before the 121B finally gets lucky. Just a whisker short of 10,000, but wait! Dead tanks continue to spot for a few seconds after they've been taken out. <laughs> There's the 10,000 spotting damage! <laughs> Down to 24 hit points with absolutely nothing to show for it, and then within the space of a few minutes, 10,000 spotting damage. Faith in team? Justified. And he is all over the team in chat there. I mean, he can't say enough good things, especially about the Fosh 155 and the Jaeger room. Without whom, and of course without Dave spotting, this would probably have been a complete disaster. And the K91 here as well, doing light tank things in the middle of the field in a Russian medium. <laughs> he probably got a fair amount of spot and damage himself. Thanks to these guys, they're now four kills ahead, and the team have more than double the remaining hit points of the enemy team. It's difficult to see how they... I mean, can you imagine losing this one after that? <laughs> We've seen worse things happen. Uh, but I don't think we're going to see that happen today. Bosch 155 spotted. Doesn't really matter. Wow, do you hear that gun firing? It sounds like the sun coughing. <laughs> That's a 155mm gun for you. I think the writing is definitely on the wall for the enemy team here. I mean, there's still four kills behind, despite pulling one back. But they're all pinned into this corner, and they're getting spotted and just dispatched one by one, as the rest of Dave's team swarm them from all directions. The enemy team, it, it's just the artillery, basically, and one tank destroyer, who, between them, have slightly more than... They now have less than a thousand hit points. <laughs> Dave's team have more than 12 times the health of the remaining tanks on the enemy team. And it's just the object 
and he's been spotted and yeah that's it from zero to hero <laughs> for dave in the amx 105 and another personal best he's never done this much spotting damage in a game before even here on prokhorovka 10,000 spotting damage and he did it all on 24 hit points well, not all of it. I think he got the last thousand after he had zero hit points. <laughs> so either way, spectacularly well done. It turns out persistence does pay off. So congratulations to uh, Dave in the AMX 105 and Kopi Copes in the M6 for their two personal bests in today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. And as always, take care and I'll catch you next time.